Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Moira Dillon and I'm an assistant professor of psychology at New York University and director of the Lab for the Developing Mind. I'm also mom to a lovable 11 month old. So in my lab, what we do is we investigate the origins and development of uniquely human cognitive capacities. So what does that mean? Well, we bring infants and children into the lab, we try to figure out what they already know, and we try to figure out what they build upon when they're learning in formal contexts, like in school settings. So you guys entered lots of wonderful questions for me to address today. I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. Um, and let's get started. So one question that came in a lot, I have my questions over here. One question that came in a lot is, what are the thought processes like of a baby? What's it like to be a baby? Great question. So it's really hard to answer that question because we can't just ask a baby what they're thinking and they're not gonna be able to tell us. So scientists like me have developed ways to figure out what babies might be thinking by using the behaviors and abilities that they have already. So for example, babies look longer at things they find interesting, novel, or prefer. So we uh, capitalize on this tendency in babies to, to have reliable looking patterns when we're trying to figure out what they know. Babies also, when they're a little bit older, can reach for things. So we use that as well as a, as a measure of their uh, knowledge about the world. So what kinds of things have we learned? What are the thought processes of a baby? Well, what we've learned is that uh, babies actually have quite a number uh, of capacities, um, cognitive capacities, uh, even before they have lots of experience out in the world and even before they can talk. So for example, babies know about objects. They know objects are solid. They know objects can't be in two places at once. And they know objects move only when contacted by something else. Um, they also know, this is something you might have encountered before, that objects don't disappear out of existence. What else do babies know? Babies also know about other people. So babies have expectations about agents in the environment who have goals, who move efficiently towards those goals, and who act rationally. So for example, if a baby sees an individual walk across the street to pick up the mail, they're going to infer that the mail was that agent's goal, was that person's goal, and that they're going to go straight to the mail as opposed to meander around the neighborhood first to pick it up. What else do babies know? Babies have intuitions about number. This is a great one in terms of thinking about formal mathematics in school and learning formal mathematics in school. One of my favorite experiments with neonatal infants, so babies who were just born, was one that looked at numerical representations. Okay, so here's what happened. So babies listened to either four tones in succession, beep, 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 or 12 tones. And then these babies were presented with monitors that had either four items on them or 12 items on them. The babies who heard four tones looked longer at the uh, four item display, and the babies who heard 12 tones looked longer at the 12 item display. This is amazing, right? Babies were able to, um, to uh, represent their, uh, their capacities in the numerical domain using both auditory and visual information. So babies know a lot. What, what are the thought processes of baby? Well, you have a lot of knowledge about particular domains, and you're able to make expectations based on that knowledge and then show reliable looking or reaching patterns based on um, what your expectations are. Another instinct that babies have is their instinct to learn language. So this is something that is developing in babies and um, most babies will develop this and it's something that um, is underlying the thought processes of, of, of children and infants really early on. Okay, next question. What's the single best thing parents can do for a baby's cognitive development? This is a tough one. It's a tough one because there aren't the kinds of gold standard studies that give us the answer to this one. So the best kinds of studies that we can make reliable inferences from are ones in which groups of infants, for example, would be randomly assigned to get this thing. Another group of infants would be randomly assigned to get this thing, a particular kind of cognitive training, say. And then we would see, after a period of time, which of the two treatments elicited results that were beneficial to cognitive development. This is difficult practically and possibly also ethically, so those kinds of studies haven't been done. So here's a caveat in whatever recommendations I'm able to give today, um, that most of the time the particular gold standard studies haven't been done on this issue. Okay, but what can I recommend? Well, my answer might seem a little bit unsatisfying, but I really believe this. The best thing you can do to foster your, single best thing you can do to foster your infant's cognitive development is provide a safe and secure home where they're getting fed, where they're sleeping, and where they're getting love. And why is this important? Well, that means that their brain can concentrate on cognition um, and not survival. So if you have a brain that's developing in a challenging environment, a stressful environment, it's going to really be focusing on coming up with the adaptive tools to, um, to succeed in that environment. But if all of those security issues are taken care of, then there's going to be some resource left over to, um, to flourish in the cognitive domain. 
So um, what's the best way to develop cognitive abilities in babies and toddlers? Okay, so this is a great bridge into, into this next question. Okay, once we have a safe and nurturing environment, what can we do to exercise those cognitive abilities? Well, um, my recommendation would be to build upon those content domains that babies already have, and in particular, use language to do so. So for example, you guys can play together in a social kind of um, interaction with a particular object. Bang the object, move the object from one place to another, have one object hit another object, right? All of these intuitions that babies have about objects, exercise them. Exercise them in a way that's playful, that's low stress, um, that's socially engaging, and allow the baby to explore. You can also talk about these things, right? So the way to bridge these you know, informal intuitions about everyday life into formal context is to start talking about them. Kids need language to succeed in school. So how do you do that? Okay, well, one intuition that babies have from really early on is that nouns refer to objects that have similar shapes and similar functions. So they can form a general category about an object if they hear a label and they see this particular exemplar of this object, example of an object has a particular shape and particular function. So let me give you a concrete example. A bottle, so I have my water bottle here. Um, bottles have particular shapes, um, they have a particular function. So you can label all of the bottles in your environment, demonstrate drinking from the bottles, and your baby will learn that bottles are the kinds of things that have this kind of shape and that have this kind of function. And if you think about objects in everyday life, a lot of them meet these specifications, right? So you can go around and label different things and you know, show commonalities in their shape and function, and babies will learn that these are general categories um, of bottles, of chairs, um, of spoons, uh, and that will be an exciting way to make them learn building off of their intuitions. Another thing that you can do, this one's in the numerical domain, you can start using noun labels attached to numerical information. So instead of just saying, um, oh, here's one and here's another one, you can say, here's one cookie and here's another cookie, okay? Attaching that noun label will help make that numerical information concrete to babies and toddlers and will help them learn abstract, a more abstract representation of number in the long term. You can also even sneak in some numerical operations. So you can say, I have one cookie and one cookie more. How many cookies does that make altogether? Two cookies. Okay, so they're definitely going to be encountering things like addition in school um, by the time they hit, I don't know, kindergarten, first grade. So you can exercise that kind of operation um, early on by using everyday uh, numerical language and applying uh, noun labels to it. All of that said, their babies and toddlers, make it fun, make it socially engaging. You don't have to drill anything, um, drill, drill anything in quite yet. They'll get plenty of that in school. Okay, next question. How do I foster school readiness? So similar, uh, similar kinds of recommendations here, especially in the domain of mathematics, right? Social engagement is really important, so you want to make any kind of learning context fun, uh, game-like. Um, but preschool pedagogy has often been built on this intuition that um, kids learn best when engaging with uh, literate, numerate adults um, who are wanting to exercise with them the, uh, the intuitions that they might already have um, about the numerical, spatial, object, people domains um, in everyday life. And this is something that I would, uh, I would suggest is probably worth considering um, in terms of school readiness. Um, connecting these intuitions to the kinds of vocabulary that they'll see in school, um, but putting it in kind of a fun and, and game-like context. Okay. What's the best age for infants to, to, teach, uh, to teach them sign language? What sign should I start with? Okay, baby sign. All right, baby sign is something that parents can find helpful that may be fun, but it's important to note that baby sign is not a language. It's a couple of isolated words. And you shouldn't be worried too much necessarily about teaching baby sign. Um, do it if, some, if it's something that you find fun and enjoyable. It doesn't need to be drilled into baby's heads. It's important because it's not a language, right? They're going to be picking up and, and developing language naturally. Um, and, and this is something that could just be an, an extra, a throw in. Babies start to get gesture at around nine to 10 months. Um, so that if you're thinking about doing baby sign is maybe, uh, is maybe a good time. But again, they'll be developing language soon. And they'll probably come up with their own cues to communicate, uh, to communicate with you gesturally um, if, if you haven't observed those already. I'll make one caveat here. If you have a deaf baby, then it's really important to give them uh, to give them a sign input as soon as you can. Uh, for deaf babies, sign language, not baby sign, is their language. So it's really important to get, that, that in, get them that input as soon as you can. And for that, I would uh, consult a, um, uh, your pediatrician to get some input there. 
All right, next question. Um, when does a child develop a sense of self? That's an interesting question. Okay, so I guess for this one, it depends what you mean by self. So um, when a baby learns what their name is at six months or later, that's in a sense, a sense of self, right? Um, they're turning to a particular cue. Um, so that happens around six months or a little bit later. Um, babies also pass what's called a rouge test at about 18 months. So what this is, is if you put a little piece of, or a little uh, dot of rouge on a baby's face and you put them in front of a mirror, only about 18 months or later will they kind of reach for the rouge and, and acknowledge that, that, you know, kind of recognize themselves in the mirror. This, I guess, is another sense of self, right? Where you recognition of yourself as an external kind of representation. Um, but sense of self in a deep way, um, I don't know. I feel like that takes a lifetime, right? Are we really sure who, uh, do we have a good sense of self even by the time um, we're having our own babies or maybe motherhood gives us a new sense of self? Uh, so I think this is an interesting question. I think there are different ways to think about it. Um, but uh, talk to your baby, talk to your toddler about these kinds of things and maybe you'll uh, hear some inter interesting intuitions articulated. All right, uh, last question. What are some early signs my child is inherently smart or gifted and how might I nurture that? So this is a tough one because the developmental trajectories of babies are really variable. Um, so some babies are walking and talking at 10 and a half months and some babies aren't doing it until, I don't know, two years or later. There's really a lot of variability here and um, it's hard to know. For example, Einstein was said to have talked rather late in development and we all know he was rather gifted. So things you could look for, um, pointing behavior early on is correlated with vocabulary development, but this is a correlation um, and it's not quite clear what, what the rationale is here. Maybe just symbolic thinking in general. Um, what else can you look for? I don't know, things I would look for are curiosity, attention, um, engagement with others. And I think the best strategy here, no matter what you recognize in your child, is to try to follow their lead. So if your child seems curious and seems like they want to be doing more things, then give them more things to do. If your child seems overwhelmed and um, uh, overstimulated, try to listen to those cues too. So take a step back and see if you can recognize in your child what kinds of cues they're giving you. But regardless of how you're able to pick up on these cues and what particular signals your baby is giving you, whether or not they want more to do or less, I'd go back to the original suggestions that I had, was that find the, um, the kind of the everyday um, and enrich it by talking about it, by allowing your child to focus on a particular object or a particular set of objects or spaces or people and encourage them to explore and discover on their own. This idea of play and exploration, we don't really know how it works, how it fosters learning, but it seems to be important. So I would encourage you to look for particular interests in your child, particular inclinations, and to allow the child to explore those inclinations and support them in, uh, in whatever they seem interested in. So thanks very much for uh, these wonderful questions. I hope I was able to answer them. You can always visit my lab's website uh, for more information on the kinds of studies that we do and the kinds of things we're looking at. You can also feel free to uh, sign up to participate. We have studies going on for infants through young children, uh, and we're looking at all of these cognitive capacities that uh, we believe are foundational for, uh, for infants and children to learn and that will bridge them into formal contexts. Thanks very much.